Hello, my name is Sarah McIntyre and I'm the writer and illustrator of Grumpy Corn and Don't Call Me Grumpy Corn. So welcome to my workshop. I am going to walk you through making your own book or mini comic and I'm going to give you some helpful tips along the way. So the thing you're going to need is a piece of paper, probably two or three pieces of paper, and a pencil or a pen and then maybe later if you want any colouring supplies. So first I thought I would introduce you to the unicorn in Grumpy Corn. Here we go. Here we see Unicorn tying up his rowboat at his writing cottage. Unicorn was sitting in his special writing house. I am going to write the most fabulous story in the world, he thought. This made him feel very pleased with himself. He already liked being a writer. You can see he's got his inspirational posters and his post-it notes for plotting his story and his special fancy notebook, something for making tea, nice light there even a ukulele in case he wants musical inspiration. But Unicorn didn't know where to begin his story. Hmm. I need my special fluffy pen, he said. He went and got his special fluffy pen, but he didn't know what to write. I need a cup of my special moonberry tea, he said. Then I will be able to write my story. He went and made himself a cup of his special moonberry tea. And Unicorn sat at his desk, wondering what to write in his special fancy notebook. He sighed. I wish an idea would come knocking at my door. You know, my inspiration for writing Grumpy Corn wasn't that different from Grumpy Corn's own experience. It started out, I had to write a story and I didn't have much time and I didn't have an idea. So I wrote the first thing I could think of. I wrote. Once upon a time, Sarah McIntyre was trying to write a story and couldn't think of anything. And then I thought, that would be more interesting if I was a unicorn, a unicorn who couldn't write a story. And that's how I came to Grumpy Corn, being this wannabe writer. And he doesn't do a very good job of being a writer. His friends actually end up writing. Narwhal, he's the one who sort of picks up the pen and takes it and starts writing exactly what's happening. I have an idea, said Narwhal. Once upon a time, a unicorn tried to write the most fabulous story in the world. Sometimes that's the best inspiration. You don't have to think of some amazing idea. Just start writing literally whatever's in your brain or where you are right now. Say, once upon a time, I was sitting at my desk wondering what to write when. And I had so much fun making him trying to be a writer that I decided I'd give him another job. So in Don't Call Me Grumpy Corn, he tries to be an astronaut. And actually, this time he succeeds. He builds his own rocket. I can show you this. Here he is on the beach. You can see his writing cottage, but here's the rocket he's building with all the materials. There you can see he's working on it. He's got a plan. He's got sort of building some supplies, all the kit. He's even got cookies and a, or biscuits and a, a flask with hot chocolate or something in it. Unicorn was sitting in his brand new rocket. I am going to discover the most fabulous planet in the universe, he said. This made him feel very pleased with himself. He already liked being an astronaut. As you can see, he's got his pictures, his drawings of his friends, his donut machine, his moonberry tea, his um, cereal machine. He's got even stuff he can do some sewing, uh, snow globe, emergency biscuits, even a disco ball. Wait for me, he called out a voice. It was Mermaid. Can I come too, she asked. But there are no mermaid astronauts, said Unicorn. But there could be, said Mermaid. Floating in space will be just like floating in the sea. When Unicorn turned around, he saw that his other friends, Narwhal and Jellyfish, were already in the rocket. Unicorn sighed. All right, you can all go into space with me, but only if you let me be the first to walk on the new planet. Secretly, he was a little bit happy. He had been nervous about going into space all by himself. And they're gonna have a big blast off. Now Grumpy Corn goes through a whole range of emotions when he's doing these books. He starts out quite excited and happy, and then he gets frustrated and angry. And on the front cover, he just looks plain grumpy. So I'm gonna teach you how to draw some different unicorn emotions, which you can use in your story. Let's see, here's a basic unicorn shape. There he is, his ears, his horn. 
and a smiling unicorn. This is very happy. His eyes are up like that. So happy unicorn. Now, what else could he be? He could be, say, tired. And you can use his ears to show that. They kind of go back. So there's back ears. Maybe his horn's a bit more pointed forward. He's kind of hunched his little back. There he is. And he's very tired and his eyes are sort of shut. Maybe kind of sad eyes. And he's got bags under them because he's so tired. Oh, maybe his little mouth is sticking out. Maybe he's even drooling a bit. And his, even his mane is kind of flopping a bit more. There we go. There's another ear. So there's a very, very tired unicorn. How about a startled unicorn? His ears are really upright. His horns pointed right to the sky. And his eyes are very, very big. He's like, what? His mouth is going, ooh. Maybe his other eye even pops out like that and his nostrils are flared. His hair is sticking out. Very surprised unicorn. What about an angry unicorn. So maybe his ears are back again because horses put their ears back when they're angry. And he, oh, let's see, he's going, Rawr! His eyes are like that. He's so squeezing him tight because he's so angry. Maybe his nostrils are flared again. Maybe his teeth stick out a little bit and his tongue is going, Rawr! And he's spitting, he's so mad. So that's an angry unicorn. What about a sly unicorn? So maybe he's got one ear down. And the other ear is kind of cocked up to listen. Just paying attention. Uh, let's see, what am I gonna do? I don't even know what the mouth is yet. I'm gonna have him looking sideways. So a sly unicorn. Hmm. And his mouth is going to be going, I think just a little smile there. It's calculating. Looks quite sinister there. Um, what about an embarrassed unicorn? Maybe his ears are right down, clamped to his head. And he's going, Ooh. His eyes are kind of slanting downwards at the sides there. He's just so, ah, what's happening? You can even add little eyebrows if you want. Help, he's thinking, what do I do? Arr. Maybe you can even put his little eye hooves up to make it even more. Or cringy. Maybe he's a little tear because he's so freaked out. Well, if you got tears, maybe let's just do a sad unicorn. He's again he's he's kind of hunched over. And he's going, Wah. maybe he's even got his hand his hands in his what do you call it? his hooves in his eyes because he's covering them up because he's bawling so hard. Uh. There's his arm again. And you can have his tears like coming off like in lines like that if you want. Wah. So these are all really quick drawing, but you kind of get the idea. It's a crying unicorn. Another ear there. Well, so now we've drawn some emotions. Let's think of different jobs unicorn could have. He's already been a writer, an astronaut, Let's make a list. Of course, your unicorn doesn't have to be a boy. Mine's a boy, but yours could be a girl or whatever you like. So jobs. You make a list of jobs too, if you like. So what is, the, what is things that unicorn could do? He, could, he or she could be a chef, maybe a polar explorer. I always kind of thought that would be cool. Um, what else? Maybe a zookeeper, because then you get to draw lots of animals. 
that's always a big plus. Maybe a footballer or a manager or a trainer or a physiotherapist for footballers. Um, a lorry driver, truck driver. Uh, maybe a shopkeeper. Could be like a shoe shop or an ice cream shop or you could sell heavy vehicles or spaceships. It could be maybe an architect. You could design buildings if you really like to draw buildings. It's a great way to do it. A uh, vet if you like drawing lots of different kinds of animals and they might be like real animals or mythical creatures. Um, a doctor. Again that might be a doctor for humans but it might be for mythical creatures or aliens. A uh, train driver. Seems like a cool job. Uh, maybe a fashion designer if you like drawing lots of different kinds of outrageous outfits. Possibly a computer programmer if you like code and you think they could maybe be a hacker or something, I don't know. Maybe design the next big um, sales marketplace or something. Could be a really crazy thing they're selling. And there's lots of different jobs. So you pick a job and I think, I think mine might be just for something different. I've never drawn a job where they're a gardener because my mom really likes gardening and I always, my neighbors do too. So I'm going to make mine be a gardener. You pick a job for your character. Now let's pick out a name for your unicorn. What could, what could it be called? Let's make another list. So I'm coming up with lots of names here. I've got actually alphabetically, I've got Alfred, Banana, Carrie, Depo, Elvira, Fred, Glitter. Making an alphabet is a great way to get lots of ideas because you have a big range. You've got Harriet, Inigo, Jasper, Kadim, Leo, Mo, Nigel, Ophelia, Pluto, Quentin, Regina, Stardust, Tambourine, Uzziah, Vern. Maybe you can think of a few more. W, X, Y, Z, a few more names. And then I want you to pick a name from the list for your unicorn character. I'm going to pick Glitter. Mine's going to be Glitter and the job I'm going to pick is Gardener. So Glitter the Gardener. And yours might be totally different. It might be Dapo the Astronaut or Julie the Baker. You decide. So now let's fold our book. You'll need one, probably two pieces of paper. And what I want you to do is fold them in half, just like this. Give them a good crease. And you can fold both pieces at the same time or one at a time. And so this is a one, one, very small book and this is a slightly longer book if you want to add more pages to it. But short books are cool. Like a single piece of paper book is totally legitimate. So here we go. There's your basic book shape. Now let's make a cover. It, sometimes I don't usually start with the cover of my books, but often it's a great way when you're making a mini comic just to get started and to really focus on what's central to your book. The main thing in your book is the, the main character, your unicorn. And I've put mine on the front cover like this. So let's let's do it on our book. So get your, your pieces of paper that are folded and make sure they open from this side. So like that. Because if they're the other way around, it's like a Japanese book or an Arabic book. But let's have them so they open that way. Okay, and I'm going to start with a pencil so I can go over it with pen. And we're, I'm going to draw a basic unicorn shape on the front cover. So get your pencil and you can follow me on your cover. So first, I'm going to start right down here, quite lightly, because I want to erase this line later. And I'm going to draw up like that. Then I'm going to do a kind of hook like that for the ear. And a line. And then the horn. And then another straight line. And then curve around for the muzzle. Go a little bit further and then down. That's a basic unicorn shape. Now mine's going to be Glitter the Gardener. So I'm going to write it right across the top and I'm going to give myself a guideline for this. So I'm going to put one line here and another line here and that will help me to be able to judge where to put the lettering. So do that. So you've got the unicorn shape and you've got a guide for your title. And the title is going to be the name of your unicorn and the job. So mine's Glitter the Gardener. Yours might be, I don't know, Larry the 
the gym gymnast or something. Okay, so I'm going to grab a pen now and I'm going to write the name. So glitter, you write the name of yours on the top. Glitter, and you can use fancy writing if you want. I might have done more stars and stuff if I was spending a lot of time on this. Glitter, and then I'm going to put right small here, the, because that is not the most important word, and gardener. There we go, I've got a basic title for my book. And so I'm going to now look at my unicorn. And actually, you might want to stop the video if you want a little bit extra time to do the, the lettering. So feel free to stop it right now. Okay, now I'm going to focus on the unicorn. And if it's a gardener, what is he or she, what would they be wearing? I think unicorn might be wearing a gardening hat. So I'm going to draw it over the top because it's in pencil, so it doesn't really matter. So here's a nice gardening hat. Let me put on. Think about what your character might wear in the job that they have. There's the gardening hat, maybe a little band around it. And because I've drawn it light, I can have the horn poking out through the top now. I'm going to make it a little shorter so it doesn't hit those words. There we go. And what else might a gardener be wearing? Maybe, I don't know, maybe he has a bit of sort of fronds coming out of the hat, like a plant or something. There we go. Just gonna give some ideas for my story. This is my gardener. And now I've drawn that, I can draw the ear behind it, popping out from the hat. And then I'm gonna go over this and draw my unicorn. It doesn't say grumpy corn, so I'm not gonna draw him grumpy. I'm gonna draw it maybe carrying a pot. So I might have the hand coming out with a, a little pot. What kind of accessories would they have? Now, what could I put in the pot? It could be a normal plant, or it could be a very silly plant. Let's see, I'm gonna make a silly plant. So it's gonna be one of these like carnivorous plants. That's given the idea for the story already. So here's the teeth. And maybe some arm leaves. And a hoof. And maybe the other hoof is carrying a garden fork. So I'm going to put a hoof there with the garden fork. But you don't know if it's going to, is it going to stab it? What's it, what's it going to do with that fork? Bit of mystery there. Um, it's going to go down there. I think he might be wearing overalls. Maybe dungarees. It's a gardener. So I'm going to draw some dungarees. Yours might be a space helmet or a tutu for the ballerina. Feel free to stop the video at any time and you can spend some time working on your picture. Let's see, I might give it a shirt there. And maybe some extra lines, a bit thinner. Sometimes if you put um, texture, it makes things feel a bit more solid. So polka dots or stripes or plaid or whatever. And I don't think I'll do a color because it just gets a bit too fussy. So there we go. And now what expression? So is it liking this carnivorous plant? Well, I don't know. I think he'd be a bit frightened. So we're going, what? Yeah, I think a bit of skeptical look would be good. There we go. So... He's, it doesn't look like Glitter has definitely been taken advantage of. It looks like he's giving it a hard stare. There's a hard stare going on there. I was going to make him happy, but he's not now. He's hard staring. Bit of mane out the back. And of course, I need to put my author name, just like on the front of this. So I'm going to find a little place. I haven't, to be honest, I haven't left myself much room. But I think I'm going to put it here. So bye. Sarah McIntyre. So you're going to put your name somewhere on this front cover. It might be under the title. It might be on a rondo like this. It could be even on top of the, the outfit if you want. So you've got a title, your author name, 
and your main character. And pause the video while you do that. Get all three things. But spend a lot of time on the on the outfit if you want and creating. This is going to be the main character of your book. And you really want to let people know how they're going to look. Right, let's make the first sentences for our book. Your unicorn really, really wants to be a certain job. So you could say, I could say, for example, Glitter the Unicorn really wanted to be a gardener. So let's do it. Let's write it into our book. So open it up to the first page. And let's start up here just to keep things simple. I'm going to write Glitter the Unicorn really wanted to be a gardener. And you write the name of your character, obviously, and what they want to be. So Glitter. Make sure it's legible so people can read it. And then I, I could say, and Glitter became a gardener, the end. And that would be a really boring story. The thing about making a story is you have to make things a little difficult for your character to make it interesting. So how is Glitter going to try to be a gardener, but not? There could be things, different things that could go wrong. Three things might be, one, Glitter doesn't like to get dirty. Yuck. Two, Glitter gets scared of worms. Yikes. And three... Glitter grows a plant that turns out to be a unicorn-eating plant. Help! I want you to think for your character. What are three possible ways that your character could be thwarted in getting what they want? How could they not quite be able to do that job that they really want to do? This works best if the first thing is kind of a small thing, like getting dirty isn't a big deal. The second thing's a little bigger, like worms, yeah, something kind of... And then... A unicorn plant is like the biggest thing. That's a really big conflict. So do them in that order. The little thing, a bigger thing, and then the really big thing. Write whatever you think of, and then you can always number them later. And definitely stop the video at this point. You're going to need some time to think these up. So let's go back to looking at covers. So the main idea of the front cover is to grab your attention and make the book like jump off the shelf, that you just have to look at it. The back cover... The idea is to sort of be a little bit more information about the book. Not so much that it gives away the whole story, but it makes you want to read more. So this says, Unicorn wants to write the most fabulous story in the world. He has a fancy notebook, a special fluffy pen. He has everything just perfect. But Unicorn has no idea what to write. When his friends try to join in, will Unicorn turn into a grumpy corn? And you can see him here in his writing studio. And he's looking frustrated. And this is kind of all gives you an idea of what's inside. This is called the blurb. And that's, that's the little bit of text. Also, there's a price tag. And you can decide what price you want your book to be. If you make it really expensive, you won't sell many. But you might make a lot of money on each one. If you make it really cheap, you might sell a lot. And, but you won't make so much money. Or you might make more because people buy it. So, here's another back cover. Unicorn is ready for his biggest adventure yet, and his friends are coming too, but will they all agree on which planet is the most fabulous? And again, there's the, the price. So let's take our, our book, and we'll turn it over into the back cover. And let's put the price tag first, because that's, you know, that's going to go on. So price tag box. And I'm going to make mine, how much should I make my box? My price tag, maybe, I don't know, $2.99, I'm going to say. And in, in printed books, there's even a barcode, which you can do. It won't actually work on the scanner, but I always like to draw anyway. Um, and then write the blurb. So what are you going to do for your blurb? I'm going to say, Glitter wants to be a gardener. What could possibly go wrong? Oops, I spelled gardener wrong. Oh, well. And of course, we've already planned out some of the things that could go wrong. So I might put little little sort of clues on what kind of things those might be. Like maybe I'll have a kind of plant looking up. There's my carnivorous plant. 
Maybe it's giving away too much, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna try it for this, just to see how it looks. So that makes me want to open the book more because carnivorous plants are kind of cool. Um, and maybe that one of those worms that it doesn't like. And if I had a lot of time, I could even do texture to indicate all that dirt that Grumpy Corn doesn't like, or Glitter the Unicorn, I mean. Maybe the, there's the worm looking a bit like, oh, hello. Wiggly. So pause the video so you can spend some time writing the blurb and thinking what you're going to lure people into your book with. What pictures? Let's go back to the front cover and you might want to erase the, the pencil lines just to make it look a bit tidier and you can color it or you can just leave it black and white so it makes it cheaper and easier to photocopy. Now you've got to make the story. Hey, so your unicorn wants to be some profession and how is he going to try to get there? And of course, there's three things that go wrong. So you can work those in. It gets worse and worse and worse. You could do it in comics. You can do it in pictures. You could do it in text any way you like. I'm going to get started writing and drawing my book, but you can use this time now to start your book and I'll just be drawing in the background or you can sit and watch me, whatever you prefer. So I'm going to leave you with that story starter and you can make your book. You have a unicorn that really wants to be a certain job and do it well, but you've got to make it difficult for them. And that will make you have a very interesting book. I hope I get to see some of the results of what you make. You can find more of my activities at jabberworks.co.uk 
and I'm on Twitter at Jabberworks and Instagram, also Jabberworks, and even Facebook at Sarah McIntyre. So happy drawing and I hope your book is really fabulous. <laughs>